to uh, provide uh, suppliers um, about a little bit more information about high and also this tender opportunity that's that's currently available to you to to bid for so we will be um Changing so both myself, uh, Claire, and and Camilla will all be presenting um, some of the slides. So we will just um, pass that uh, pass that responsibility um, around amongst ourselves. So let's get started. Uh, we've done the introductions, so that's fine. And um, so what we're going to look to cover off this morning with you is a brief introduction to Hi and also to the um, the Northern Innovation Hub. Um, a little bit about the tender requirements that have been published, um, aspects to do with the tender response and our scoring methodology, and some general information and advice for you uh, when, when tendering with High. And so Highlands and Islands Enterprise, uh, we're a Scottish Government Economic and Community Development Agency, and we cover the north and west of, of Scotland. And, and you can see from the map on there that that is a, a large area and it covers more than half of the land mass of Scotland and it's home to uh, more than 440,000 people and 19,000 businesses of all different sizes and types. So that's a, a vast geographical area. And we help to build a prosperous, inclusive and sustainable economy across the Highlands and Islands, um, aiming to, to attract more people to choose to live, work, study, invest and visit the area. And we're ambitious for all parts of our region uh, to sustain and develop a vibrant rural economy. And we have some three key priorities uh, within High, and those are based upon uh, successful, productive and resilient businesses in the area, strong, capable and resourceful communities and creating conditions for growth and a green recovery, which have never been more important uh, than, uh, than just now to us. Um, so we have our website, there's a link uh, in, the, in the slides where you can find out more about the support that we provide to help businesses and communities within the high region. Um, we also have a link to our uh, common procurement strategy and that includes some aspects about corporate social responsibilities that we seek to um, achieve through our procurements and our supply chain and, and some of the slides later on will cover a little bit more of those in more detail. Um, but key priorities for us um, are the transition to net zero Scotland and community wealth building. Um, so our procurement strategy um, was, was updated last year and it includes a procurement mission statement. And um, so that talks a little bit about the, the way that in which we try to do our procurement processes and also the aspects that we're trying to, that we needing to achieve from our uh, procurement. So obviously uh, an emphasis there on, on value for money and uh, about sustainable procurement, community benefits, and helping to reduce inequalities uh, within the region. Sorry, reducing inequalities within the region. And I'll hand over to Claire. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvia. So, just to tell you a little bit more about the Northern Innovation Hub, um, the as I call it, the NIH. Um, it's a uh, part of the wider Inverness and Highland city region deal which is a 315 million pound um, investment from the uk and scottish governments and the main lead partner is the highland council um, and hie is one of the delivery partners we deliver a total of three um large projects through uh, that are funded by the city region deal the northern innovation hub being one of them the Northern Innovation Hub itself it aims to uh, bolster the economy through creating better, more quality jobs um, and sustainable jobs, and also um, has an aim to encourage young people to stay or move into the area. Okay, the next slide, please, Sylvia. Thank you. So the NIH has delivered uh, around um, three key themes of young people, of uh, economic growth, and of sectors in place, and it supports small to medium sized enterprises, which is um, businesses of 250 or less and social enterprises, I should say, um, through a number of individual projects. Um, just to be clear, the projects all cover the, the whole Highland Council area, which um, if you refer back to the map that Sylvia showed you earlier, is not the entire Highlands and Islands um, region but is um, the majority of the mainland plus Sky and the Small Isles. And you can find out more about the, the programme via the link on the slide. 
Thanks, Sylvia. And um, so just moving on to a very quick summary of the tender requirements um, on page 1 of the scope of services, you'll find um, more information about the food and drink tech hub project, which is our food and drink project um, and of which this tender is part. And the 3 key aims of the project are to promote collaboration between businesses um, um, and particularly around the innovation uh, agenda. And um, to give them access to um, peers and also to technical and special advice that will then um, support the innovation. Um, also to provide a workspace for um, businesses to come together to access this advice um, and to stimulate um, innovation in, in new product and process development. And finally, to um, uh, to allow businesses to access the information they need through demonstrations, training and um, networking so they can um, share and uh, develop. Next slide, please. So the service proposition of this um, particular tender is to provide the um, business services su su and support that's required to support the food and drink technology hub, which is currently under development. Um, the three aspects of that being the network, um, which is <clears throat> building on the work that we have already achieved um, through our Highland Food and Drink Innovation Network project, which ran from 2018 to 2020 and built a, net, a network of over 100 businesses, uh, supporting them to develop their products and access the support that they need. Um, the second aspect is to provide the specialist advice and support that is required by these businesses to help them develop their products. <clears throat> this, um, this support may be provided by the supplier themselves through um, third party subcontracts as part of a consortium or other collaboration and um, equally to signpost and um, help businesses access the um, variety of um, free support that is already available uh, across the uh, across the Highlands and wider Scotland through um, our partner agencies and support um, organisations. And the third um, aspect is to um, provide to ensure that the service and the tech hub, the wider tech hub is part of the wider landscape in food and drink innovation to make sure that there's no duplication and to make sure that we're um, there's synergy across the landscape. <clears throat> uh, next slide, please. Thank you. So this table is um, um, kind of copied from the table on page three on the scope of services, and it shows how the um, this particular contract will run in them um, in in synergy with the physical space, which HIE is uh, currently developing. And it sets out the sort of year one, year two and three year um, timeline of the project. Um, you'll see, um, I don't want to go into too much detail about it, but what what steps we envisage will be happening along the, the three years of the project. Um, and as was mentioned at the beginning, if you have any particular questions about things that we're asking suppliers to provide, please do that through through the PCS platform. Um, um, and so HIE is currently developing um, our plans for the physical space. We're undertaking an outline business case um, at the moment, and that will be presented for funding this later this year. So we hope that the facility will be open by year two or certainly by year three. Um, next slide, please. So this summarises the tasks, activities and outcomes that we are asking suppliers to provide. As you will see, there are seven specific tasks and it shows this, this slide shows the outcomes and impacts that we expect these, um, these activities to provide. Um, I haven't included the suggested and mandatory activities that are um, required through the tender. You can find out more information on the scope. But it's just to show that um, these um, these are the the key tasks that we'd be expecting suppliers to provide. Next slide, please. 
And finally, this is a summary of the outputs that we expect the supplier to achieve through the duration of the three year contract. Um, and obviously these will be reported and monitored by ourselves and reviewed. Um, we've, we've left it quite flexible and we are looking for suppliers, innovative ideas on how they will achieve these outputs. Um, and really that, that's all I have to say about the tender. As I say, if you have any specific questions about our requirements, please put, put these to us through PCS. Thanks very much. Thank you, Claire. I take over about the tender response, some generic information that you may find useful. So the tender milestones um, are published both in the, con in the contract notice and the scope of requirements. Key dates highlighted in red for you. These are for your diaries um, with the intention that please do not leave them uh, for the last minute with some reminders in because there's a last date to request any clarifications so as the 11th of February at 1200 hours and the tender deadline is the 25th of February equal 1200 hours so just remember that we won't accept any late tender so please just be mindful of these milestones thank you next slide please and um, one of the key documents that you'll need to complete on PCS is called single procurement document. Um, first part is just information only. It's about some details of your organization, company name, size, and the likes. And it also has a, a number of pass fail exclusion and selection criteria questions. They, um, they are about criminal convictions, blacklisting, conflict of interest, insurances. So I'm um, not going to go into uh, great detail about this, but that is on PCS and make sure you uh, use the online module for this. If you're unable to meet the pass fail criteria in this document, you will not be evaluated further, which means um, you'll be excluded from the process. Next slide, please. Um, if you do pass your SPD, then you will be assessed against uh, the price and quality criteria we published in our documents. Uh, price has got 35% weight and quality has got 65% altogether adding up for 100% value for money. The quality criteria, we've broken down into five specific questions. We have a question on the delivery methodology. We have management methodology separated out as well. We've got a question about your team. We've got a question about risks and challenges. And the final question is about economic growth and community wealth building priorities. For the price, you'll need to use the pricing schedule. Please make sure you complete and submit that one. Next slide, please. The forms that we need you to submit in order to have a complete tender from you is your SPD. That's uh, an online module on PCS, as I mentioned. We have your tender response form, so that's the, the longest form probably you'll need to complete. It's in Word or PDF. We expect this one to be uh, submitted. You have a pricing schedule in Excel to complete. You also have a community benefits and fair work practices response form. It's, it's an Excel spreadsheet. And we have a few pages for uh, forms for signatures um, that to be sent back in Word or PDF. And if you consider it necessary, you can include a Freedom of Information Annex um, in Word or PDF, further information about this one you can find in our Scope of Requirements document. And please ensure these are separate files. Try not to combine them into one because these will be used at different stages. Um, and information, any information about the price, please just only include it in your pricing schedule and no other parts um, of your bid. Next slide, please. Um, some generic um, advice about your response. Each question we have as you covers a number of different areas um, to help us understand how you will meet our requirements. Uh, we use weightings to indicate the importance of each question. And every question has a maximum page limit, which you will have to adhere to. Um, as a piece of advice, start drafting your response as soon as possible and use the tender period to raise any questions on PCS. The earlier you start, the more questions you may find. So again, please try not to leave that to last minute. And questions will be recorded and they are anonymous. 
um, anything, any questions about our scope, our terms and conditions, page limits, uh, can be asked via PCS um, and we'll publish the response that will be visible to everyone. And please note, we can't accept any questions or qualifications raised after the deadline, that uh, 11th of February deadline, and that includes those relating to, to the T's and C's. Um, next slide, please. This is just a screenshot of the pricing schedule. As you'll see, you've got the main tab where you have to put in your contract totals for the two different scenarios, which have got their own weightings, and you have got two separate tabs for, for your breakdown. Um, and you obviously got some notes. And again, if you have any questions, just feel free to ask. And please do submit this one in Excel. Thank you. Next one, please. I'll give a pass over to Sylvia. Sorry, I should have said. Thanks, Camilla. Um, so the next few slides are just looking at some of the aspects to do with corporate social uh, responsibility. So um, this reminds reminds everybody of the, the commitment by Scottish Government to, to Fair Work First and that uh, more, more than ever, um, the importance of having that at the heart of employment practices and um, funding and, and procurements. So, um, under the Fair, Fair Work First, there are various uh, pillars and um, the, the bottom two, which are in the orange colour, they are the more recent ones that were introduced by the Scottish Government. The, the blue green ones have, have been there for, for some time now. So there are different aspects in there. It's all about um, trying to create, obviously, fair work for, for employees and, and for workers. And the, the second, the, the last two that were introduced are um, focused upon offering flexible and family friendly working practices for all workers, but from day one of employment and, and also um, opposing the use of fire and rehire uh, practices as well. Uh, community wealth building, this is an approach uh, to economic development and that helps to redirect wealth back into the local economy. And, and places increased control and benefits into the hands of local people. Um, and this is an element that um, links directly back to HIGH's three strategy priorities that I mentioned in one of the um, earlier slides. So thinking about um, growing and, and producing uh, resilient businesses and conditions for growth, and also thinking about the, the communities. Um, also links to our procurement vision which is to achieve the highest standard of professional procurement, which directly contributes to the sustainable economic growth of, of the high region. And um, Camilla's mentioned that there is a question that you'll need to, to respond to in the tender response form, and, and that is about how you will contribute to the above through your contract um, delivery. And the, there's more information in the tender response form about that question. So as an example that we've mentioned in there, um, about how you might um, think about a positive impact on local businesses, groups and individuals. So if you're looking to um, source specialist and technical advisors and activity providers to, to support clients through this contract, um, are there opportunities there for, for um, existing businesses and social enterprises within the high region? And community benefits, they're a contractual requirement which um, delivers a wider social benefit and it's in, it's in addition to the core purpose of, of the contract. So that's a Scottish Government um, definition. We have to include them in procurements where the, um, the total contract value is equal to or greater than 4 million, but we also do within high, we do include them where we can and it's relevant and proportionate into lower value procurements. And um, we are doing that, we are choosing to do that in this particular uh, procurement as well. And we aim wherever possible for those community benefits to be delivered back into the high uh, region and linking to supporting our priorities and, and objectives. So there are some example um, theme and one of the documents that um, is part of the tender documentation that you'll be able to access through through PC, PCS, it is available to you, is a guidance document and it gives you a little bit more information. Um, but there are some typical themes for community benefits and Camilla's referred to an Excel spreadsheet that you'll need to fill in. That it also will have the themes and you can choose um, what types of community benefit themes that you want to um, propose as part of the contract and um, so as an example recruitment and training um, educational 
environmental community engagement and um, equality and diversity but the, the excel spreadsheet that we issue does give you more um, drop down options under each of those those themes and the ability for you to input some text as to what you're proposing to offer um, a key theme for this particular tender um, that we'd like to um, focus on. It's not an evaluated uh, question, but we do encourage bidders to, to deliver some impact um, is, is in association with the young person guarantee. And in the um, documentation that we've issued out, there are links um, to find out more about the young person guarantee and also um, signposting to the, the developing the young workforce website where you can, if you're not sure how to maybe propose something linked to the young person guarantee you can make contact with them to to get some ideas and, and see what's available and what programs they're actually offering um, but typically they would be things that are associated with recruitment and training um work experience or placement opportunities for young people voluntary work um aspects those types of things and that the young person guarantees is a is an aspect that high does support and also Claire's also mentioned about young person theme linked to uh, the northern innovation hub as well so that's our preferred community benefit obviously it's not scored or evaluated you can choose yourself which of the um, themes you wish to propose and what you wish to propose under those themes and i'll hand over to camilla thank you Thank you. I'm going to talk a little bit about scoring uh, methodology. Next slide, please. This is the published um, criteria the panel will use for um, scoring your submissions. So you can see it's a zero to four scale. I'm not going to read out all the criteria, but it's all in the contract notice and the scope of requirements. On the next slide, I'll explain how it works. So every panel member will score independently and the marks they give, they'll be averaged to form a single score and we'll apply a factor. The factor is going to be higher uh, if, if your weighting is higher. So there is an example there. We divide the weighting, so say it's 20% with the maximum score available, which is four in our case. So 20 divided by four is five. So we apply the factor of five and there's a little worked example there. So you'll see how three panel scores, two threes and a four average and a 3.3 for a question that's got 20% weighting, how it's going to give you a weighted score of 16.7. And as always, the scores are calculated in Excel, so it's automatically rounded up or down to one decimal point, so it might not align uh, totally. Next slide, please. For the price, that will be completed by um, us in the procurement uh, team. We'll use your pricing schedule. And we use the published formulas um, that you can find in the scope document. We have two scenarios. So that scenario when the tech hub building is not ready for, sorry, is ready for year three and one when it isn't. And they each got a separate weighting. So they got 25 and 10 uh, percent adding up to 35. So the average of um, the average of the contract total for scenario one and the average for scenario two uh, will be each allocated 50 points and one point is deducted from the score of each tender for each percentage point above the average and the other way around as well it's added to it um, depending on which way of it goes and then we apply the weighting of 25 and 10 percent to these points and the maximum scores you can get on these two scenarios is 25 and 10 points and then we add uh, the two price scores together and that contributes to the final price score which well, obviously get, then gets added to your quality score and like for your quality scores these are calculated in excel thank you this is just a, a worked example i took from the scope if, if you're interested you can you can just check it out it just shows you uh, two examples how we work out uh, the percentage and how sorry the, the weighted scores and how they end up being the final total score for your price next slide please and um, some very general information and advice um so we're going to talk about just now quickly um some hints and tips so as always make sure you read all the tender and contract documents and that includes the questions via pcs you could find something there that's uh, of good use so you can you can download them um 
via PCS. It's good if you put the deadlines for queries and the tender submission in your uh, calendar and set some reminders. And we encourage the use of the anonymous Q&A option on PCS if you have any questions and you, or you want to clarify something you don't quite understand uh, rather than making um, assumptions, just please feel free to ask. Um, and the, in the award criteria response form just goes through each question, identify the key points and remember that each question is evaluated on its own right. And if you write up your draft response, then you can check if it's within the stated page limits, because anything over the page limits won't be um, counted towards your evaluation. We'll have to ignore that. Next slide, please. It's handy if you get someone else to read your response, just a fresh pair of eyes, see how they would um, score the answers or what they think about your response in general. And be wary of a cut and paste job and try to make sure your response is tailored to, to high and your reference or organization, and of course, it's tailored to this tender um, as a whole. And we can only award scores on what you have in your proposal. And if we can't use any existing knowledge we may have of you. So please make sure that you fully respond to the, the questions and allow uh, plenty of time for uploading to your tender response uh, to the post box on PCS. Because if you're late, you'll be excluded and we don't accept late submissions, especially the SPD that's an online module. Please do not leave that for the last minute. And whether you win or not, you will get some feedback from us and hopefully that will help you. Uh, we will provide you with some feedback that you could use either for next time tendering with us or tendering with uh, at another organization. Next slide, please. And then the slide pack that we will upload to PCS, you'll find various links um, to sites that might be of use if you wish to read more up about any of the topics that we covered today or uh, to, to learn more about the supplier development program and how they could help you. So this this the slide pack will uh, get onto PCS. Um, and next slide, please. If you have any questions regarding the, the scope, please raise it on, on PCS and we'll answer there. So it's going to be visible for everyone. But I did see a question, I think I've answered that from uh, one of the members on today. Will the slides be available on PCS platform? Yes, they will be. Are there any, any other questions? and ask now, if not, uh, use BCS, and we'll provide you with a response there. Thank you.